Zoom. Hello YouTube, it's Akrit again, back with another video from the home studio. Today I just want to share my first impressions of the portable turntable reloop spin. Accurate beats. Accurate beats. So this one has been available on the market for some time now, but I just recently decided to pick it up myself. I do have the MPC-1 and the MPC Live 2, which are standalone devices, and now with this one I could film videos and make beats outside in the woods or in a park or whatever, make a beat on the MPC and also put some scratch on it for a video just like that. I've only had the reloop spin for a couple of days now and I haven't done any modifications at all to it and I haven't bought any scratch records. It comes with one 7 inch record that's samples on one side and beats on the other, but that's not much. So I need more records for it and I also need to replace the crossfader right here because the crossfader kind of works for what it is and I'm not super advanced in my scratching techniques anyways, so I guess I could kind of use that, but it also gets Frustrating to not have the sharp cut-in curve that I'm used to from using my C2 mixer from Native Instruments together with my Techniques 1210. So this one is not going to replace my scratching setup by any means. This is just a fun thing to have at the side. You know, for putting some scratch on some beats outside. That's mainly what I'm going to use this one for. And also for digging for records in record shops. To bring this one in and just plug some headphones in. And have a listen to some records like that before I purchase them. Could be kind of cool. And before you say anything, yes, that would actually be possible in most of the record stores here in Sweden. People wouldn't have a big issue with that if you just ask them nicely. By the way, I put together a little loop in machine and I put some scratch from this one on it and I filmed it. So let's cut that in right now so you can get some kind of idea about how it works or how it sounds or whatever. So obviously with my kind of basic scratching technique, this works as it is, but I want to do some modifications to it. I am gonna replace the crossfader here and put in a mini innovator that has a really sharp cutting curve and it's also adjustable, so that's nice. I'm also gonna give it a volume modification that allows me to have more control over my different volumes because this one can actually accept a Bluetooth signal coming into it. So I can play a beat from my iPhone straight into here and then scratch on top of it. And with the volume modification, I'm able to control my different volumes easier than it is right now. Because straight out of the box, that functionality is just weird. I'm not able to control the separate volumes of the beat and the scratching in a way that I find even usable, but sure, it is what it is. I guess I'm gonna make another video when I've done the upgrades to this one and see how much better it actually got. Because it's definitely usable as it is right now, if you're new to scratching and just looking for a way to get into it, this one could definitely be it. But since the crossfader isn't sharp enough and since the volume can't be controlled in a smart way, my planned modifications of this one could actually take it to the next level, I hope. Now let's take a closer look at the connections of this one. It's not a lot to brag about, but again, it is what it is. So going from right to left here, first we have the USB connection that it gets its power from, and I would love to see a USB-C connection here, but unfortunately this is micro USB. 
Next to that, we have the power button, the master output on RCA jacks, and two different headphone outputs, one big jack and one small jack. That's nice to see. Then we have this full-size USB port here that says USB Rec. This one is used to plug in stuff like a USB thumbstick and that way record your audio from the Reloop Spin into the thumb drive itself. And from what I've heard from other users of this one, the audio quality that you get from recording audio like that isn't really good enough. So I guess it's cool that it's there, but it's not very useful. I guess I should also mention that it has a built-in speaker inside of the unit itself. So that outputs both the Bluetooth audio that you put into it and the audio from the record itself. And there's also an option to put batteries straight into the spin itself. This type of battery isn't very common where I live, so I guess I'm just gonna plug this one into a battery bank and run it off the USB power. But yeah, hopefully you're gonna see me use this one in the woods or in a park or on the balcony or whatever to put some scratch on my beats that I make. I just need to do some modifications on it to make it better than it is right now and also get some more seven inch vinyl and then I'm good to go. And that's what it looks like with the lid on. So it's cool and it's lightweight. And I guess I messed up a little bit and I just realized that it does have an external audio input on the opposite side of all the connections right there. A little bit of a strange design choice, but it's there. Well, let me just demonstrate real quick how bad the built-in crossfader actually is. I'm able to use it for what I do, but if you're a little bit more advanced than I am with your scratching, this is definitely not good enough. Break it. Break it down. So basically you have to move the crossfader quite a bit until it starts playing the sound. And for someone who's really good at scratching, that's definitely not good enough. So again, I guess I kind of have to make an update video here whenever I have the modifications done to the reloop spin. Tell me in the comment section below on this video if you want me to do that later on. So I guess that's it. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Until then, hard to gut. Accurate beats. Accurate beats.